Okay, so we've checked our piston pin clearance on both the rod and the piston. Um, the rods are one thou, almost exactly across all six, and our pistons are just a smidge tighter, about eight to nine tenths, um, which is totally acceptable. We're gonna go ahead now, um, we're gonna disassemble our rod caps, we're gonna clean our bearings for the rods, and then we'll slap those in there. We'll measure our crank and see what kind of oil clearance we're working with on there. So now we're going to go ahead, um, we've torqued our rods down uh, with our bearings inside of them. We're going to go ahead and measure our journal on the, on the crank. We'll zero our dial indicator into it and then we'll check our clearances on the rod. So we have measured our uh, crank journals. Um, we have measured each individual one. We're gonna go ahead now just quickly check our rod bearings. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll reference each individual one to each rod. And then we'll decide which location each rod's gonna go into. Um, I'm hoping that they're just gonna be very, very close and there won't be any mixing matching required. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that right now. Uh, so we've gone ahead, we've measured our journals, and we have measured our oil clearances. Um, this is a standard crank that has been polished. Um, typically we end up with a slight variance in journal size on a polished crank. Um, still under two ten thousandths of an inch um, variance and um, uh, out around and taper, um, but does land within the range. So we're, we're right under the two and a half thou, um, the two, three. Um, so we're within two tenths um, variance across all six. Um, but it is going to be a good clearance that's acceptable for what we're going to do here. So we're going to go ahead now. We've already uh, matched our rods to the journals we're going to match them to. Um, we're going to go ahead now, set that aside, and we're going to clean our pistons up and check our piston to wall clearance. And then we'll probably start assembling, and then we'll go ahead and we'll cap our rings. So we've gone ahead now, we've measured our pistons um, individually, and we have measured our piston to wall um, for each cylinder. Again, not a lot of variance between these, so um, there's no need to mix and match, um, but the clearances we're getting about three and a half to three eight, um, which is very good, kind of what we want to see. Um, so next up here now, we're going to be doing our ring gaps. Um, when we're doing our ring gaps on the JZ, um, on this application, it's going to be street to slight high performance build. Um, so we're not going to go too much bigger than what uh, CP recommends. So it'll be bore times 0 0.0045. That'll give you a rough clearance, um, which is around 15. Um, so we're going to run 16. And then for the second ring, we're going to be running 22, which is 6th thou larger. Um, they recommend anywhere from 4 to 8th thou. I like to run a little bit of a higher margin, but not all the way. Um, so we'll, we'll cap those to those, or to those clearances. And then we will um, start assembling. Okay, so we just finished gapping our piston rings. Um, again, we did the 16 thou top, uh, 22 thou number two, and then we did basically just verify that there is a 15 thou greater clearance on the oil uh, control rings. Um, we uh, didn't go into too much detail on these, but uh, if you do want to see any more detail on just gapping rings, the RB26 video information does apply to these, um, and there's more information in that video. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead now. We're going to uh, set everything aside here. We're going to flip the block over. We're going to check our crankshaft run out. We didn't do that earlier in the video, so we're going to do it now. And then we'll go ahead and we'll install it into the, into the crankcase, and then we'll start assembling our pistons and rods, putting our uh, um, piston rings on, and then we'll take the torque plate off and begin assembly. Ok, 
Okay, so we just set up our crankshaft here in the block for our runout measurement. Uh, we remove the middle five uh, main bearings and just have the outer two. Um, this is just the easiest um, at home way to measure it. You don't have to have V blocks or anything like that. So we do it this way. You've just seen, we've just set it up. Uh, we measured it. We got about two thou uh, measurement. Um, the actual runout um, number is going to be half of that. So it's going to be one thou. Um, so that's well within uh, OEM specification. Uh, we're going to call that good. Okay, so next up, before we put the crankshaft in, we're going to start installing our oil jets. Um, we're going to torque these down to 80 inch pounds and they just go right inside the cylinder wall or right inside the cylinder block here, um, one per cylinder. All right, so uh, now that we've got our uh, crankshaft in the block, we've got our six um, end main caps installed. We're gonna go ahead now and install our thrust washers. On the Jay-Z, it has four pieces. The two without the locating tang go on the bottom. And the one key thing you need to know with these is you have to make sure that the groove in the bearing itself is on the outside. Um, do not put on the inside, it will not go well. Um, so we usually just roll these in here a little bit of assembly lube and roll them in from the top. You might have to shift the crankshaft one way, install one, and then shift it the other way and install the other side. And next up, we're going to install the top thrust washer. They do only go on one way with the tang, um, so don't concern yourself if you do happen to put it in backwards. It uh, won't really fit, it'll stick out the bottom, so you have to really not be paying attention to get that wrong. Um, so we're going to go ahead now. We're just going to stick these ones in here with a little bit of assembly lube on both sides just so they stay in position. Assembly lube on the actual bearing itself, and we'll pop it into place. Okay, so now that we have all of our caps installed, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install each one. Uh, remember, just a light dab of ARP lube, just like we did before. And then we're going to torque these down to spec. Okay, now we're gonna torque down our main caps now that we have them installed. 33 foot pounds, 90 degrees, just like we did in the previous videos. Okay, so now we have our crankshaft installed. We gave her a nice little test spin. We're gonna verify our crankshaft uh, thrust clearance. Um, we may have to loosen off this cap and uh, adjust our clearance by hitting the crankshaft, just like the RB, or very similar to the RB. Um, so we're gonna install our uh, dial indicator. We'll check our thrust clearance, and if we need to make any adjustments, we will. If not, we'll leave it as is. Okay, so we've uh, walked the crank back and forth a couple of times just to squeeze out any assembly loop that might be affecting our measurements. Um, so now we've gone ahead, we started measuring. Um, we're getting about just over a thou of thrust clearance as it sits. Um, so we're gonna have to adjust the cap uh, position. Um, it could be far left or far right, um, removing that little bit of clearance that we need. Um, we should be around a minimum of three. Um, so three thou. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now, loosen the cap, and then we're gonna uh, hit the cap left and right, or hit the crank left and right, and try to get that centered in the block and uh, see what our clearance is afterwards. Okay, so in order to um, set your thrust clearance to the Jay-Z, we're gonna have to hit the snout of the crank and the rear of the crank uh, pretty hard, so two ways you can do it. Um, piece of wood and the uh, any kind of hammer that's heavy, or you can get a really big mallet. If you're gonna be using a piece of wood, just uh, make sure you cover up the block on the inside. Just so when the wood does eventually kind of break apart, it doesn't end up inside the engine. Um, we did loosen our center cap 
um, and then left it snug just so we can move it left and right to try and center it. Okay, once you've given it a couple of love taps, we're gonna torque our main cap back down. And then we'll check our clearance. All right, so now we've uh, tapped the both ends of our crankshaft. We have tightened down our cam cap now. We've measured our um, crankshaft thrust clearance. We're at a perfect 3 thou, um, which is the low end spec of the 2JZ um, engine. So now we're good to go ahead. We're gonna paint pan our cap, and then we'll move on to the next steps. All right, so now that we've got our crankshaft installed, we've checked our thrust clearance. Uh, for our next uh, video here, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start um, removing the torque plate. We're gonna install our uh, pistons and rod assemblies. We're gonna assemble them together as well. We're gonna uh, um, put the engine on the stand and then uh, carry on with the next steps. Mm -hmm.